Hey, welcome to Dive Bar Comedy Podcast. This is GT with... I'm Wild Joe. And we are back at Lotus Lounge in East Hollywood this week with some fun comics. And uh, this is one of the diviest, diviest dive bars that we do shows in. Yeah, the Lotus Lounge is located uh, in, in East Hollywood on Vermont, like a block north of Santa Monica. And one thing about the Lotus Lounge, I got this feeling one day it's going to get gentrified. I don't know. I'm actually surprised. You know, L.A. is a rough place uh, for finding parking, um, for finding even any bar that's not packed and and crowded and uh hard to get in so uh if not for our show the other night it was a tuesday night but if it hadn't been for our show they may have had only had maybe two customers besides uh, the comics and the people that came to see our show so they're they're not doing too well they're they're pretty slow i think only on weekdays on weekends they might be doing really good but um i remember i used to be in silver lake I had a shop in Silver Lake. I used to live on top of my shop. And uh, and then, you know, it was just starting to get gentrified. And then uh, and then uh, I moved to Echo Park. I had a shop on in, at Echo Park. And then uh, it was starting to get gentrified. And then now I feel like I'm in East LA, East Hollywood. And then, you know... Uh, it's coming and it's getting run over by all these uh, progressives. I don't really know what that means. Uh, gentrified. It's not like this is a all black neighborhood where white people are moving in, like Harlem or the Bronx or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's only so many places that rich people can live. So in L.A., it's an expensive uh, place for real estate. Uh, they do kind of spread. Um, Silver Lake was a hot spot maybe 10, 15 years ago. And it's, it still is, but it, it became like the property values went way up because of that movie Swingers. And uh, there were some cool clubs and bars that people would go out there and like the artist type people started moving in and, and it got more expensive. I would say it got a little more classy. Uh, is that what you mean by gentrification? Uh, no, uh, it's sort of like, uh, it's beca- you know, uh, di- you know, it's becoming more, uh, meaning, you know, kids, guys, dudes, women walking around with shorts that are ready for a flood, you know, uh, really, the, you know, those type of type. I'm, I'm talking about kind of pants that are ready for a flood, like, like, two size small for them, and you know, those type of people are coming in, and you know, they're building cafes, they're building. You know, uh, they're throwing uh, CDs on trees, and I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either, but, um, yeah, it sounds like you, you're saying they're getting a little bit more hip hipsters. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe you're just getting old, and the styles are changing, and, and you're not keeping up, GT. Well, you know, uh, I felt, like, kind of out of place, you know. Uh, before I used to be there, and... Uh, I remember when I was in the corner of Benton Way and Sunset, and uh, I used to be afraid of walking around with my laptop because someone might take it off my hands and run, and there would be a lot of trannies walking around. Uh, tra- hold on, I gotta be politically correct: transsexuals or transgenders. Um, and then uh, I used to be afraid of walking around, you know, taking my laptop in and out of my shop. Uh, now I don't even see homeless people walking by. What happened to them? Okay, uh, you have a different perception than I do because when we had to record this podcast and I had to sit outside with my laptop because the band was so loud inside. And I said to you, "Don't leave me out here." And then you walked away. I couldn't even follow you because I had my laptop and all my gear outside on the street. Uh, I don't know if these people were homeless, but there I saw people with barely wearing any clothes, like shirtless probably didn't own any clothes looked homeless to me uh, homeless looking scummy people walking around um, even some of the comics were like saying like oh yeah if if your friends were black they would never leave you out here by the, by yourself because they would know that uh that you you could get jacked 
So people were shocked that, that you left me outdoors with my computer. Well, you know, I grew up in Hollywood, so I grew up in a predominantly pigeon neighborhood where there's pigeons everywhere. Now, you know, you get progressives coming in, they're 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 gi- giving the pigeons um um uh, bird control and those homeless people they're not going to bite you. You know, they're just walking by. They they just they're just probably afraid of your blonde hair. All right, let's get serious here. Uh, I don't really know what you're talking about. Um, progressives, that just sounds like something you picked up off Fox News. I don't even know what a progressive is and somebody that likes progress. I don't know. But uh, welcome to California, GT. Uh, everybody here is a libtard, as you would say, um, or as Fox News would say. So uh, l- let's just try not to get political because uh, we're going to make a lot of enemies. So... Anyway, the show, um, I thought the show went pretty well, uh, but but you had a bad time. I could tell you were, you were in a bad mood and you were upset afterward. What happened? Well, you know, the band was late because uh, their car broke down. We, you know, we opened up the show with a band and uh, I have to uh, find out what's going on and and the comedians were sitting around were trying to get on stage and i was i'm the one trying to run the show do the podcast and make sure people pay when they come in through the door and some people try to go in from the back door and some people just act like they're comedians when they're not and they're trying to get in for free and yeah yeah and uh, lotus lounge is pretty strict about their two drink minimum where uh, some of the comics don't want to spend a penny when they go out they think that you know, as an artist, they should be getting paid, not having to pay. And so they wouldn't even buy uh, a single drink. So I noticed some comics left because of that. They said, when's the show really start? They walked out and uh, came back after after 9 p.m. Yeah. Um, some comics are kind of... Uh, uh, they're too good for me or something. They act like they're too good for me. They're too good for this podcast. They're too good for the show. Um, I don't know what to say, you know, maybe just because they got some movie credits and uh, they think they made it in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, they, they didn't have any movie credits, by the way. They, they were just the same as anybody else. But, yeah, you're right. I think it's all about your attitude. And, actually, I have noticed people that have, like, a, a ego and think that they're better than other people and – um, think they're famous when they're not, do sometimes wind up getting famous. So uh, fake it till you make it. Sometimes it works. Yeah, I used to fake it until I made it. I used to go and act like I have a show at an open mic. I used to go, hey, guys, I have a show coming up. I have a show coming up. It's actually an open mic. Well, yeah, I guess it's better than having no shows coming up. But uh, we do have shows coming up. We have shows every month. Um, we are at, uh, Liquid Zoo every month, the last Thursday of every month. So if anybody in LA, come check us out. Uh, we also post shows on our Facebook page, GT's Comedy Jam. You can find that on Facebook or you can go to Dive Bar Comedy. Well, actually that's just our podcast, divebarcomedy.com. We should put our shows up on there too, but you can go to GT's Comedy Jam dot com and find our show flyers and show schedules. So if you're looking to see us live, it's only $10. And it's always a fun time. Um, we have bands and, and a lot of comics every every time. So, uh, yeah, I felt sorry for the band. I felt really sorry for them because they only got to do about 20 minutes. And I then I, I found out that they brought all their gear on the subway, which is horrible. They carried all those amps and stuff on the subway. Yeah, um, they carried a bunch of amps on the subway. Um and no one fucked with them, you know. No one tried to steal their shit. Good thing, but you know they're a bunch of big guys, and so no one's gonna fuck with a bunch of group of guys. And uh, it gets kind of. Uh, if you ever, have you ever taken the subway in L.A.? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I don't really like the subway much or public transportation in general. I know some places everybody does it, like London or or New York, and I have taken the subway in those places, but. 
Um, but yeah, uh, I don't really like public tra- transportation where you're just mixed in with all these people. And um, yeah, I wasn't so worried that they would be getting robbed because you're right. They're kind of big, intimidating group of guys. But uh, also just carrying all that gear and lugging it around. I mean, being in a band is, is rough just because of the gear. Uh, that's why a lot of people in bands, they drive Volvos they um if they don't have a van and uh having to carry it i th- i feel like the modules have an extra lot of gear it, it really didn't even fit on the stage they have so much gear i don't know how they were able to just carry it all through the town yeah i took the subway um quite a few times uh back three four or five years ago man uh subway it's a whole different world. You t- when you're busy driving around in your own car all by yourself, there's a world out there. When you're out of the car in a subway or in a bus, I've taken a freaking subway all the way down to Oceanside, San Clemente, and uh, San Clemente, and uh, man. The babes in those buses, the babes in those subways. Oh my God. They'd be like looking at me going, damn, I've never seen you before. I'm like, no, new. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was not my experience. I saw a lot of maids and housekeepers. Uh, I guess maid is not the right word. Housekeepers going to and from their, their jobs. Um, homeless people and uh, people that were very poor and can't afford a car. Um, I, I never saw anybody who was a babe. I saw a lot of people who were mentally ill, and um, it was a frightening experience for me being on a bus or any kind of public transportation in L.A. Uh, nobody I would ever want to meet, although, you know, nothing against people that ride the bus. Like, I'm sure there could be some cool people that are on there, but in general, uh, it was not a crowd that I would want to mix mix it up with. So... Uh, but that goes back to you, GT. Uh, we, you mentioned on another episode that you would like to have sex with female prisoners, so maybe that's your type. Um, you like to hang out. I should just drop you off down at Skid Row. You could meet some babes in the homeless encampments. I am actually, it's right by Wall and 8th Street. I've been there, and uh, I was out there the other day, and I was walking around, and uh, I see guys in on Skid Row that look like one of the comedians I just I'm like dude you guys <laughs> why are you doing in that freaking tent get out dude get yourself out of there dude I was like this is disgusting Holmes come on and they looking at me going ah oh, they're trying to hide their face I'm like dude get dude you don't be, you don't look like you belong here I mean you look like you can probably get a part in a movie dude well, you can't even get a part in a movie. It's it's not easy to get a part in a movie, and it's not all about looks. Just because somebody looks normal doesn't mean that they have uh, the mental health or the the job skills or the, you know, habits of getting out of bed and getting dressed and going on interviews or whatever they have to do to hold a good job or the family support or, or whatever else. So there's all kinds of reasons people could go homeless, and it's not just about looks. But uh, anyway... We better let you guys back uh, to the show and not bore you on and on with our talking. But, uh, but yeah, I, I had a fun show, Lotus Lounge. Uh, GT, he was a little upset because people left early and uh, worst, worst thing that happened, he lost his clipboard. Oh, man, me and clipboards. I keep forgetting them. Um. Uh. I had the last one the other day at Schoonerville, the last one the other day at Lotus Lounge. My clipboard has names of all the comedians, comedians who brought people, p- comedians who didn't flake. But now I have to go by my memory, and I just need to remind myself, you know, hey, don't leave stuff behind. And and when you're running a show, you got stuff going on. At the same time, you're a comic. You're trying to go up on stage. You know, you're trying to remember all your lines without – you know, most comedians, I see comedians go on stage with freaking cell phones and notepads. I think that's dumb. I think if you're a comedian, you're going on stage with a super cell phone. You're on stage. You're on this huge stage. What if? Hold on. 
You're on stage at Cabo Wobble. I saw the, I, I saw com- comedians get on stage at Cabo Wobble. That thing is fucking huge. It's a huge stage. And you're going on stage with your cell phone. Hold on, I wrote, I remember this joke. Hold on. Hold, 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 hold on, dude. You can't remember the joke? Don't do it. If I can't remember my jokes a lot of, sometimes. A lot of times. I don't do it. If you don't remember, don't do it. Don't take out your freaking cell phone. That's stupid. That's seriously stupid, dude. That's seriously stupid, girl. That's stupid. Get rid of your stupid cell phone. I don't, I don't, go, I don't go up to comedians and tell them that. But on my podcast, I'm saying it. I see it throughout the years. So many comedians do it. Even well-known comedians. Get rid of that freaking cell phone. You're on stage. Memorize your lines. Do it. Go through your lines in the shower. Go through your lines in your car when you're stuck in traffic. Go through your lines when you're getting ready. Go through your lines when you're in front of the mirror. Don't freaking go up there and try to go through your lines in front of a bunch of people like, Oh, hold on. I got a joke. Hold on. Something I heard someplace and I wrote it down. Now I'm going to say it in front of you guys. No. We don't want to hear it that way. Yeah, especially in an open mic where it's only three minutes. If you can't remember three minutes of material, uh, that's not very long. How are you ever going to become a real comic and do your one-hour special? I mean, those people are doing one hour. None of them are reading off their cell phones. So, uh, yeah, if you want to be a professional, or, uh, it's a good idea to start memorizing your jokes. I agree with you, GT. Well, something you agreed with me. Yeah, we're in agreement. All right, people, uh, enjoy the show. Uh, we have some fun comics and, and some fun interviews. So uh, check it out and uh, tune in every week. We come out on Wednesdays at midnight, which is basically Tuesday nights. Yeah, every Tuesday night. But I don't really post it on uh, comedy groups until Wednesday because I'm out. You know, uh, late at night, so uh, doing comedy. Yeah, but you can always find it at uh, divebarcomedy.com or you can subscribe on the, the iTunes podcast uh, or on Spotify or anywhere else you can find it on the web. Attention, all drinkers. Attention, all drinkers. Do you like a smooth tasting vodka that goes down with no burn? How about Global Vodka, straight from Italy? Check it out. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Not only does it have a smooth, great taste, it also is gluten-free and organic for you health nuts. So try Global Vodka. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Or next time you're in L.A., check it out at Universal Bar & Grill. What's up, Dive Bar Comedy listeners? We are here at Lotus Lounge. I'm Wild Joe. Hey, 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 this is GT. We're here back again at the Lotus Lounge. Yeah, yeah, our fi- one of our favorite spots in East Hollywood. And we're here with a very co- very funny comic, Seth. Seth, sorry. Lawrence. Seth Lawrence. Sorry, I didn't catch your last name. First time on our show. How does it feel? How do you like this place? I'm excited. This place is cool. I'm excited to get the feel of it and see, see who shows up and see what happens. It'll be fun. Yeah, we're having an interesting night so far. Uh, usually the band is super early. Today, uh, th- there's pretty much nobody here. They're nowhere to be seen. Uh, you know, we can all make music, right? Just sing along. Totally. Yeah, um, I'm kind of uh, worried uh, the band's not here because they usually have their own PA system and they set it up and we're ready to go. And Something about the lowest sound, the PA system is just it has this huge cracking noise. It just hurts your ears. And uh, we've been here. It's like we've been through it before. And Mr. C is the one who knows how to make that PA actually sing right. Well, actually, uh, yeah, GT had some uh, snapping and cracking here when he tried to turn on the PA. He's not an audio guy. But uh, last time Mr. C made some cracking noises, he almost got beat up by uh, one of the patrons. Yeah. Mr. C, uh, Mr. C almost got into a fight with one of the uh, big sumo, re- the big sumo wrestler type of looking dude, and uh, the da- the dude actually pushed him on towards the fan the first time around. And uh, remember, there was 
Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he the whole fight this time or the most recent time. I think it was the last time we were here at Lotus Lounge. So uh, it did come out on the Die Bar Comedy podcast. So if listeners want to go back and check it out, uh, Mr. C started. Uh, you know, they were hurling insults at each other, and it all started with the bad PA system cracking. It did scare me though when it first turned on. It scared the crap out of me. So I can understand. You don't like being, you know, scared. Maybe that's why you picked a fight with Mr. C. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, if you're here relaxing and enjoying your drink, your beverage of choice, uh, you're right. It's kind of a shock and startling. Um, I would also say the other reason he picked a fight with Mr. C is because this guy is uh, bigger than anyone, and he probably is happy to pick fights with uh, almost just about everybody. Yeah, I would never pick a fight with anybody. I run from fights. That's my strategy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Um, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, fights usually, uh, they always try to find me and, uh, and always like p- people trying to like start a fight with me. Uh, I think it's your face. Maybe it is. You know, I have that intimidating face and people are like, yeah, I'm going to start a fight with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they want to test, test their manhood. Yeah, perhaps. That's why I run away. Uh, you know, uh, I don't need that. I don't need that. I am interested in rough and rowdy, though. I don't know if people check that out. But amateur fights are amazing to watch because these guys have no technical skill and they're just wailing on each other. It's amazing. The website? Uh, yeah, it's, they have a YouTube channel. Um, but, yeah, it's rough and rowdy. It's uh, a bunch of guys that get together and organize boxing matches in random cities, typically on the East Coast or New England area. Well, interesting, interesting. Shout out to Rough and Rowdy. All right, Seth. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, you like you like watching YouTube videos. Uh, are you on YouTube, or where can people find you on the internet? Sure. Uh, probably right now, where you want to go is Instagram, Seth T Lawrence, uh, and I'm starting up a little rambling podcast of my own where I just talk about my thoughts uh, at theopenmic.fm. So you can hit that up too. Oh, cool. So it's a website, theopenmic.fm. Yep, yep. These two guys that are starting a new website, starting a new app called The Open Mic, uh, really just for audio. So it should be interesting. You know, I'm excited to be a part of it, and uh, we'll see how it goes, see where it goes. Yeah, our podcast is audio, too, because these dive bars are so dark. When we try to, when we try to film it, it never comes out very well. It's tough, and it's a lot more equipment to get the cameras up, and, you know, it takes special cameras to film in low light. It's tough. It is tough. Plus uh, the, the editing. It's going to be more work for me because I'm the one that ends up editing this. And, um, but it's too bad because people can't see how, how extremely good looking we are. Right. You and not GT because he gets in fights all the time. Right. Uh, <laughs> but you guys run a good podcast. It's a fun one to listen to. Oh, you've heard it before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've checked you guys out. It's fun. Great. Great. So how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, this is the beginning of my second year. And and doing stand-up. I started doing improv uh, in Utah, where I'm from. Did that for a year. Uh, Then I was an attorney for a year. I do everything for about a year. So uh, You quit quit your job as an attorney? Yeah, for my wife. Sacrificed it all. And so... uh, What is she? She is a professor at USC. She she teaches out of the business school. So she's very smart. She's incredibly smart, other than marrying me. That's probably the worst thing she's ever done. She made you quit your job? Yes. Yes. It was a joint decision, but yeah, she had to take a job somewhere, so we decided L.A. so I could pursue comedy. So wow. Totally, yeah, totally switched career paths. Because you could still be a lawyer in the day and do comedy at night. I could, but, you know, I'd be away from the kids. We have three kids, and we didn't want to pay child care. It would be a lot of work. The way math works, you know, with taxes, we'd be making not that much more for me to work full time. That's with a lawyer job. People listening, this is how hard it is to, to uh, have kids and pay for child care even if you're a lawyer it's not worth it to even do child care i'm about to quit my job right now um because i'm not making enough money i have an mba yeah. but uh, i'm barely getting paid and uh and i'm about to have another baby as well hey, and thank you and um it's just yeah it doesn't make sense to to pay for somebody to babysit and and just basically make no money for myself, like $5 an hour. Yeah, exactly. And you don't know what they're doing to your kids, you know? I mean, they have nanny cams and stuff now, but I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to find good child care, unless it's you. Yeah, I have two more days of working. I'm very excited. Wow, well, congratulations. What were you doing then? Or what are you doing now for two more days? Um, accounting, business accounting. All right, so you're coming up on busy season then? Or is it in a, like a month and you're dodging it? No, no, there's no ta- it's not tax accounting. It's uh, 
just bookkeeping and everyday accounting for businesses. Gotcha. So you're busy all the time. Pretty, yeah. pretty much, pretty much. Cool. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to be done with that, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. Uh, GT has to be a um, breadwinner. Yeah. Um, everybody has got the breadwinner, right? So, <laughs> so I guess, I guess uh, uh, you, got, you can't do nothing without the breadwinner, you know? I'm sorry. You know, my, my mind's in different directions. Areas and my mind's on the PA, my mind's on the band, my mind's at the door, my mind's at different places. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We were just saying, uh, Seth, the, his wife has a great job. She's a professor at USC, and so she's taking over the breadwinner role, where uh, GT has to uh, sell a lot of gumballs to, to support me. Yeah, a lot of gumballs. <laughs> I chew gumballs as I'm working on supporting the family. That's good. Your jaw looks very strong. Have you heard of this new thing called a bicycle face? No, I haven't. What is that? I just learned about it. It's been all over the news the last couple of days. It's a guy whose jawline is so strong, and then he has, like, the chin so defined that it looks like a bicycle seat. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. I, I can. That's cool. <laughs> I don't really think it's a very nice-sounding compliment because these guys are actually good-looking. It probably stems from jealousy, these people that are calling him a bicycle face. Right. That's where a lot of insults stem from, right? It's just jealousy and spite. you got to bring down those that are above you. I agree. I agree. So anyway, we can't wait to hear your comedy. It's getting loud in here, so we better go. But uh, nice to meet you, Seth, and thanks for coming on our show. Hey, thank you so much. I'm excited. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys, you need flooring because your floors got messed up during the last party. You need flooring because your dog urinated all over the place, and it's all brown and stained, and it's buckling, and it's warping because of your dog. You were out doing comedy. No one was home. Well, log on to selectflooring.biz. Selectflooring.biz. B-I-Z. And hit them up. Call them up. Say, hey, what your situation is. Are you ready for the next comedian? Yeah! I said, are you ready for the next comedian? Yeah! That's right. So put your hands together and show some love for the dude coming up to the stage, the S and the L, the godson, Mr. Seth Lawrence! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. C. Wow, that's really close to my recording device. Uh, sweet, I know. I look out of place. Tax season's coming up and I should be busy. Stuck next to a computer helping somebody out, but uh, I don't do taxes. So there you are, all right? Uh, I am, uh, I have three kids. Anybody else have kids in here? Yeah, oh, all right, it's a kid crowd, that's fun. Uh, I guarantee I hate your kids and I guarantee you hate mine, right? How about that? That's why I don't understand pedophiles. Anybody else? No? All right. Oh boy, let's see, what do we wanna work out here? Um, let's work it out, right? Let's work it out. My mom is a beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, it was just barely International Women's Day. Anybody do anything fun to celebrate? I watched the R. Kelly tapes. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> watched the R. Kelly tape. Were you convinced, or uh, was his interview more convincing? No, it wasn't him. <laughs> it was not him. Oh, man, I love it. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, my mom, I want to talk about my mom. Uh, she, back in the day, does anybody remember logging on to, to use the internet? Yes. Yeah. AOL, all that stuff. See, so my mom, she's very smart, capable, but that was not in her wheelhouse. So she asked me to help. Sat down, turned on the computer, and I said, all right, mom, you want to move the mouse here, double click? And she said, hold on, you got to slow down. I said, what are you talking about? I looked over, and she was taking notes, and she'd written down, turn on computer. And I thought, no, I'm out. This, this is going to be too many steps. I can't do it. I'm not committed to this entire process. So uh, my mom is also half a uh, gangster. My, my brother ran away when he was 16 years old because he had too much to do, I guess. Too much responsibility or whatever. My mom immediately called the banks and shut off all of his debit cards. Everything, you know, cut him out completely. She said, Keith, where's he gonna go? He can't get that far without money. You know, he'll be back. And uh, he was, he was back three hours later and wandering in, you know. Uh, and my mom said, Ben, what were you thinking, man? Anything could have happened when you ran away. And he said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, you could have been raped. And he was like, no, what? No, guys don't get raped, mom. And she said, yeah, man, guys can get raped. You pick a hole, bud. 
pick a hole, and that's what's going to happen to you. Uh, so. Sounds like a true story. It is a true story, for sure. My mom is a marriage and family therapist. I should mention that now at this point. She was not trying to condone or you know facilitate healing. She was teaching a lesson at that moment, teaching a lesson to a young punk kid. Uh, my wife is uh, my second mom. Anybody else feel like that? Maybe the wives in here feel like they're a second mom, training their husbands to be the used shoe that you need for your soul. I don't know. That's the way I feel. Uh, I am being tailored to just fit my wife. That's it. That's what she wants. So I'm now a stay-at-home dad, right? Because who am I gonna? How am I gonna cheat as a stay-at-home dad? <laughs> right? Could you cheat as a stay-at-home dad, sir? The answer is no. Uh, you could not cheat as a stay-at-home dad. You know, come on home to my place where I've got my kids. No, that's not gonna work. Oh yeah, I don't have any money. It's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to do it. So I am. Uh, I am a gigolo. That's basically where I am. I'm a gigolo to my wife, and that's fine. I enjoy it. I'm living the dream. I married up. All right. That's that's how I that's how I roll. Uh, my wife is the type of person who is annoyingly positive. Anybody have these people in their lives? You you've had a day. You're in your head, you know, and you're just like, I want to stab so many people right now. And uh, there was one night I was cooking dinner, and I was cutting onions, having those thoughts, you know, going over what my kids had done. I was just like, man, if my kids did not have bleeding disorders, I would hit them so much harder, you know, <laughs> so much harder. And uh, she comes in, all happy, positive, singing, bye, bye, birdie, getting right up in my face. Man, I can tell you guys are not a domestic violence crowd, so I won't, uh, I won't get into that. Uh, I love my wife a lot. She actually accidentally hit herself with a car door. This is a true story, all right? I know it sounds shady, but it's a true story. She parked too close and was trying to get out of the car and ended up shutting it on her eye, all right? So she had a nice shiner, nice shiner. And then she came home, wanted to be helpful, and took the kids out to the grocery store. So there are my three kids with my wife. She's got a shiner. Two of my kids have a bleeding disorder, so they bruise really easily and spontaneously. So it's a woman with a shiner, three kids, two of whom look like they've been beaten pretty badly. Do you know what happened to her in the parking lot and at the checkout line? Same social worker approached her two times, said, ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> are you all right? Uh, she gave her, she gave my wife the card, you know, her, her social card, her social work card, and said, you know, you call me, I've seen this a hundred times. My wife came home, told me this story, you know, and I'm like, you're not, you're not telling her. You're not making that call. No. Uh, we had a good giggle, a good giggle about it. Any conspiracy theorists in here? Yes. Nice. All right. So uh, here's how I celebrated Black History Month. I listened to an interview with an autopsy doctor from the O.J. Simpson case. I'm not so sure he did it anymore. I don't know where everybody else is, but he may not have done it. You know? Uh, according to this autopsy doctor, it was a left-handed dude. Uh, it may have been multiple guys, and the Colombians may have been, may have been involved. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I don't know. The earth might be flat for all I know right now. That's where I am with my life, you know? My whole world has been turned upside down. I remember watching the verdict as a fifth grader. So sure in my all-white school uh, that he was guilty, and now I don't know where I am anymore, you know? So, uh, yeah, conspiracy theorists. Any, any favorite conspiracy theories out there? 9-11. 9-11 inside job, boom. Buildings fell way too straight, right? Planted, it's a look up. My favorite is the Clinton body count. Has anybody heard of this? Oh yeah. Clinton body count. I think that's true. Yeah, I think it's true too. Uh, and I'm not saying that Hillary killed 80 people. So for people who aren't up to speed, Google this when you go home. Clinton body count, there's a list of almost, I mean 90 people. It's upwards of 85, six, something like that that are connected to the Clintons somehow. Uh, Anthony Bourdain has been implicated in uh, killing himself. You know, he may have been inspired by the Clintons, all of what I'm saying. Uh, but it's a, I'm not saying Hillary killed all 80 people. I'm not saying that, all right? But I am saying that if you are associated with that much murder and you're not Angela Lansbury, you might be guilty of something. You know, you might have done one. All right, you might have off one person. Uh, what I'm getting at is Hillary and Bill may have killed 
Anna Simpson, Anna Nicole Simpson, Ron Goldman. For all I know, I don't know. I have no idea. No. They are, I, get, I got a lot of disapproving looks on that one. Uh, that's okay, you know. So my conspiracy theories roll. Uh, let's see, I am from Utah, so uh, I bet you're surprised about that. Um, I, hello, welcome, welcome, come on in. Hey, how are you? Uh, so, given that I can believe in conspiracy theories, some of them, you're also probably not surprised that I believe in Jesus. Uh, I do, I do, I believe he's a real dude. Uh, anybody else believe? No? Don't want to fess up? We're cool? Yeah, all right, nice, nice. I, uh, I, I really hope and need heaven to be real. You know? I'm that guy. I am not the guy you want to party with. I am only useful at parties when everyone else is too wasted to get more cocaine. You know? So uh, that's who I am. And if you guys uh, all make it to heaven and I don't, I'm going to be pissed. You know? That's where I am with life. Guys, this was fun. We opened the show. How about that? We got this started. Let's hand it off to Mr. Steve. Hey, ladies. You want some hot deals on sexy styles? Check out EverydaySweetheart.com for everyday great deals on cute and sexy outfits. Club wear, mini dresses, leggings, sexy lingerie. And guys, feel free to stop by too and find something hot for the girl of your dreams. That's EverydaySweetheart.com. And for 10% off, use the friend code TAKE10. That's T-A-K-E-1-0. Thanks a lot. All right, we are back with Die Bar Comedy. I'm Wild Joe. This is GT. And we are here with Heather Dregulescu. What a name. Yes, it is. I married into it, so it's a lot cooler than my maiden name of Dixon. A Dixon it has the word Dixon in it. I, I've been telling people on this podcast, my old name was Petrie, P on the tree, so I couldn't wait to get rid of it. Yeah, uh, exactly the same way. Also, everybody thought it would be a blonde little white girl from the South, so it's nice to have a weird name that just means I married a foreigner uh, as my name now. What country is this? Dregulescu. Romanian. Oh, exotic, very exotic. I think so. I think it's a little bit cool. Then people kind of don't know what I am. I'm half Korean, half white, so they already think I'm maybe Mexican and confused. So it's nice. It's nice to have a cool last name. Where are vampires from? Transylvania, which is part of uh, Romania. Yeah, you have like a, a vampire name. So uh, people ever say uh, Heather Dracula? All the time. All the time. That's their favorite go-to. Uh, usually even MCs, when they can't pronounce the last name, will just go to Heather Dracula. Oh, MCs. They're known for that stuff. <laughs> it is. It's fine. We're used to it now, so it's okay. Uh, I, we had a comic who's been on our show a couple times named Deanna Dixon, and I, I misspelled her name. I felt really bad. I spelled it D-I-X-O-N, but she actually has the word dick in her name, D-I-C-K-S-O-N. She's baller that way. <laughs> I always used to get Heather likes dicks on her. You like dicks on you, dicks on your face. So I think uh, Dracula is a little bit better. What age? What age did the dick jokes start? Oh, probably like when I was nine, third grade or something. Third graders are evil. That's what I've determined. They're the biggest assholes. Well, as soon as that's when they start to learn what all the dirty words mean. Exactly. So yeah, if you have the name Dixon, or if you're a Peter or a John, you're pretty much screwed. So. So it's pronounced more like dicks on, dicks on. It's supposed to be Dixon, like kind of nice and together, but no kid's going to say that when they can say their dicks on you. Dixon. Yeah. Dixon. Dixon. Uh, uh, back to the name Peter. Uh, so there are people, and they're probably now 60s, 70s, that go by the first name Dick. They have the option. Their name is Richard. They could be Rick or Richie or whatever, but they go by Dick. My mom told me back in the day, Dick had no association with the penis, that back then it was called a Peter Oh, I believe that. My grandfather was Dick Dixon, so <laughs> had a nice alliteration to it, nice filthy alliteration. I don't think I would name my kid that, but, you know, I, I believe Peter was probably a little bit peckerish at the time. Peter Pecker picked up peck pick peckers. I, I'm sure that's a dirty limerick, actually, like just about Peter picking old penises off a tree or something. Yeah, something like that. I, I don't even know, but but now that we're saying it, because I didn't know that Peter was a bad word. I guess the words, you know, over time, words change. That's true. That's true. And things get better and, you know, are not as vile as they used to be. I think, what is it? Like, can we say fuck? Are we allowed to say fuck on this podcast or are we going to get censored out? Are we an explicit? We're explicit. Okay, good. Uh, so, like, 
fuck, I think, used to not be so bad. It was like a Germanic word or so that like has now become, because it's lower class, you wouldn't say it as much as before. Yeah, or ass was well. I don't know if ass is bad now, but it was just like, oh, what a silly ass, like a dumb guy. But and then it became a really bad word, and now it seems like it's kind of like every word is okay, so it's not that bad anymore. Yeah, and schools really are screwing up the whole like, what's a bad word? Like my sis, my daughter, not my sister. My daughter came home and she's like, my sister just said the R word at me, which is retard. So now that's a Donnie word. <laughs> And, and technically, retarded is like a retardando in music. It just means slowed down. It's not a bad word. But it becomes a bad word because the school kids, like you said, those nine-year-olds are so evil, they're making fun of everybody, and then eventually it turns into a bad word, and then they have to think of something longer and more difficult to turn into a, a slur. A absolutely. So, like, in 20 years, we're going to hear, you're an ignoramus, and that's going to be, like, the worst word you could call another kid. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, um... Um, what do they call you? What do they, what do they call you, GT? What do they call me? I don't know. They call me, uh, hey, uh, hey, fool. He's having a retardando moment right now. He's having a retardando moment. It just means he's slowed down a little bit. Just slow. Very slow. I'm sorry. Did you, did you take a puff outside? Is that why we're feeling good? Feeling slow? Uh, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to jump into the conversation. Yeah, GT is just his natural pace. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't have a natural pace of slow. Now that I've got three kids, it's like move, go, go fast, you know, run as whatever you can do. Right before this, I like went to a Boy Scout meeting to drop off stuff. So my life is just chaos. Oh, okay, speaking of Boy Scouts, now they're just the Scouts. So there could be Girl Scouts that don't allow boys unless they're transgender turning into girls or something. But then the Boy Scouts has to allow everyone. What do you think of that? Is that sexist? No, I think that the Boy Scouts are a better program these days than the Girl Scouts. I have two daughters in Girl Scouts, one son in Boy Scouts. The Girl Scouts are like, oh my God, look in the mirror and tell yourself how much you love you and how great you are. And the Boy Scouts are like, we're going to start a fire. Like, which one do you think is a better life skill? <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm, I'm not happy with how Girl Scouts are running their program. My youngest wants to be a Boy Scout now, and I'm like, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's jump on board. Well, fair enough. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Girl Scout cookies, GT? Girl Scout cookies. They're always trying to sell me Girl Scout cookies in front of Albertsons. And uh, I don't know. Uh, girls always trying to sell me those girls trying to sell me Scout, Girl Scout cookies. So I, I, always, I always turn them down. Yeah, I, I bought some. They, and actually, they didn't taste as good as the uh, grocery store cookies that are kind of like the generic version of Thin Mints. I thought, oh, I'm going to get the real Thin Mints. But the ones I buy at the grocery store are actually better. Well, it depends on where you bought your cookies because you know there's two bakeries there's actually two versions of Thin Mints out there two versions of everything so it depends on if you bought a little brownie bakery or an ABC bakery cookie oh wow because yeah I, I felt disappointed I felt like I remember these as being better yeah so a lot of people have that complaint I think uh, little brownie is the original one and ABC is the new one but ABC has a bigger reach of distribution and their formulas are different the little brownies are a little bit crisper snappier Thin Mints a little bit lighter on the chocolate, and the uh, what is it? The ABCs are a little bit waxier of a chocolate. So yeah, you got to figure out where you're actually buying your cookies from to know if you're getting the right one. This is like an expert connoisseur here. <laughs> well, when you have Girl Scouts, you know, because everybody's like, "Where's your caramel delights? Where are your lemonades?" And we're like, "We don't sell that. We sell the other stuff." Wow, good to know. Good to know. So it's exciting. So tell us about how long you've been doing comedy. Just about a year, coming up on my anniversary. I started doing it as a therapy for dealing with three special needs kids, and uh, it's been great. I love doing it. Awesome. Well, we can't wait to hear your set. Uh, where can people find you online? They can find me at ohethera.com, O-H-E-A-T-H-E-R-A-H.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, you will find us on divebarcomedy.com and all over the Internet, so hopefully this uh, episode will come out in the next few weeks. Awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me to the show. I love it. Hey guys, you need a party tent, you need a commercial tent, you need a tent because you have no garage? Well, log on to webtentsale.com, W-E-B-T-E-N-T-S-A-L-E.com, and check out our site. This site is designed for commercial tents, party tents, and anything but camping tents. So, if you need a tent because you have a party and you will need to buy it instead of renting it all the time. You're tired of throwing your money down the drain. 
Well, go to our website, webtentsale.com, and check it out and order your tent right now. All right. You guys ready for the next meeting coming to the stage? Yes. I thought you were ready for the next meeting coming to the stage. Yes. God damn it. Why don't you do that? Fuckers. All right, so this motherfucker right here. I like the name of this next comedian. Motherfucker sound like she bite motherfuckers at night in the dark. She might be black in the, or like woman, killer, whack Is that whack I don't know what the fuck she is, but I love the fucking last name. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look at it again because I went to a Philadelphia school and I got terrible fucking English. Like we didn't read this shit, we just watched videos. In Philly schools, we don't read books. We just watch videos and shit. But, you know, that, that has no effect on our intelligence level. All right, so the next comedian comes to the stage. She got the H and the D. You ready for this motherfucker right now, y'all? So put your hands together and show some love for Miss Heather Dragulescu. Slowly, with a lot of sympathy. 
And my sister said to me, you snap out of it. You've got three kids. You are a mother, not a martyr. Pray for a heart attack, it's much faster. So yay, my brain works sometimes, it's pretty nice. Uh, now, it's been a few years, my oldest daughter is 12, but she's a little dyslexic, so she thinks she's 21. She's got this, you know what that's like, huh? Oh my God, these bitches. They don't even start at 13 anymore. They start at like 10 with their attitude. And she's had this catchphrase, actually, no. Actually, no, we live in a democracy, and I have a voice in this house. Oh, honey, two things. Uh, one, we live in a federal republic. And two, in our house, I am president. Your father is vice president. And you, my darling, are a terrorist. And I don't negotiate with terrorists. Son, I did the white thing. I put him in Boy Scouts. He made a mistake. All he's learned so far is how to throw a hatchet and start fires. The arson kind. The youngest one, uh, unfortunately, is still a racist. Can't be helped, I guess, as you said, they're all racist. She saw my mom the other day and she said, Crampy, are you a chink? And I said, sweetheart, that's offensive. You can't say that to your grandmother because she's obviously a gook. Get it right, right? You don't all look alike. Uh, recently, I got a talent manager. It's very exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Having that, but not at me adopting three kids, you heartless people. She has never met me though. Never seen me do comedy. She said that if uh, I get five of you though to get headshots, and you get five more people to get headshots, I might have a proof. I did go on audition, asked for a plus size role. And plus size, for those of you who don't know, is the industry term for she's got a great personality. Uh, when I went there on the sign sheet, you had to write your dress size. Mine's a 16. I'm fine with it. Uh, next dress size down, an eight. And if you want to know what an eight looks like, it's like, well, half of me. Half of me is a size eight. So guys, on that note, oh, on that note, if you need some Herbalife or Lulu Row leggings, go ahead and meet me in the back after, okay? Thank you, everyone. Good job, good job. Another round of applause for Heather Dragoyescu. The vampirist. Bellas, don't look her in her motherfucking eyes. But you'll have small feet and you'll be doing some weird shit. Dragoyescu. That shit was dang. LA residents, are you tired of slippery floors? Are you afraid you might slip on your tile? Well, check out tightgripla.com. It's a local business coming out, surveying your floors, and treating it with a non-slip solution, a semi-permanent non-slip solution that will keep your floors safe, whether in the rain outdoors or indoors in the kitchen or bathroom areas that sometimes get wet and very slippery. So if you want safer floors and to not get injured while you're just walking around, Check out tightgripla.com. So we're going to go down the list. You guys like the last comedian? Does she do a good job for you guys? You feeling that shit? You goddamn right. You better be buying some drinks and whatnot at the motherfucking Lotus Lounge. Thanks to the Lotus Lounge for showing us love in the GT Comedy Jam. Thank you guys for hanging out, sticking around and whatnot. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And um, I'm hitting all these buttons and shit, but all this technology getting in the motherfucking way, but fuck it. Let's see what we got here. There we go. GG sent me pictures. Okay, so I think GG just sent me like three to four dick pics. But I'm not gonna say that shit. He's, he's Armenian, you know they're perverted. You fucking animals. They're animals. He's married, you know, he's, he's frustrated, he's married, he does weird shit. I'm gonna I'm let him slide, I'm gonna let him slide. So, you guys ready for the next comedian coming to the stage? Yeah. Are you ready for the next comedian coming to the stage? Yeah. That's right, we got a man with the B for the first letter and the L for the last name. He might be Martin's brother, but I have no fucking idea. Show some love for a brother with the coming to the stage, Mr. Brandon. Where the 
fuck is Brandon fucking Lawrence? Hey there, we are back with Dive Bar Comedy. I am here with Brandon Lawrence. What's up? What's going on? How you doing? Hey, Brandon. What's going on, man? Thanks for coming through, man. No problem, no problem. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. So uh, tell us about you. What's going on, What's going on with your comedy, man? Oh, man, I'm uh, just out here having fun, man, telling my life stories and... Uh, you know, having fun, born and raised in this great city of Los Angeles. So, you know, thought I'd give a little twist to the comedy game. What part of L.A. are you from? South Central L.A., off of King and Western. The bad part. Oh, wow. That's where all the swap meets are. Yeah, yeah. Well, one swap meet is there. You're, you're correct about that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you remember the L.A. riots? Yeah, in fact, I was just talking to somebody about the L.A. riots. Um, I still got a VCR that we got from Fedco back in the day. <laughs> you were looting? You were, you were out there looting? I wasn't looting. My uncles were. I was just in the truck. You're like the getaway, getaway driver. I was the guy that was, they were passing the stuff like, here, Brandon, take this, take this. That was me. So back in 1992, how old were you? Six. Oh, wow. So you couldn't even drive. You were just like hanging out there. I was hey, I was the guy. I was the guy that was taking the stuff and putting it in the truck. I still got the VCR. Uh, I'm older than you. I was 16, and my friends were like, "Let's go to LA and go looting," which I don't think that would have gone over very well, considering how white I am. Yeah, the what was his name? Richard Denny. He was. Ooh, it didn't go well for him either. So that was that that driver. Like he was driving a pickup truck. He got pulled out and beat up. Right. 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 That was him. That was him. Terrible thing that happened to him. Wrong place at the wrong time so thank god you didn't come to the city around that time yeah, it sounded like a bad idea it was, a, it was a horrible idea yeah i remember the smoke was coming to my house it was all like smoke everywhere i couldn't breathe i was like <gasps> and uh and they were talking back then i used to drive a white bmw and there were people were like oh there's a white bmw going around and uh looting i'm going like and, oh i know who drives a white bmw gt Yeah, that's 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 funny, man. That's funny. LA is a LA is a beautiful city, but it's home. So I notice a lot of comedians are not from LA. So it's very rare when you find one that's from LA. So I'm trying to get my little my life stories into the game. Yeah, a lot of comedians come out here and they're like, "Oh, uh, I hate the Lakers. I hate the Lakers, but I like Kobe because he's from Philly." And I'll be like, "You know what? Go back to your own country." What country are you from, Philly? Go back over there, dude. <laughs> yeah, you can't. That's that's rule number one. You definitely cannot disrespect the Lakers or Kobe. Kobe is king here still. So uh, what do you talk about in your comedy? You talk about being from L.A. or what are your favorite topics? Um, I talk about all type of things. Um, I talk about me being from L.A. I talk about uh, my, per, you know, my profession. Working, uh, everyday things that people go through. I talk about relationship stuff. Um, I have a different outlook on stuff. I have a funny way of tying in two things. So we'll, we'll see what's going on tonight. Cool. I actually I read a book. It was a textbook called Psychology of Humor. Some, some agent told me to read it. And they say that's what comedy is, is having two things that kind of are like different, but like bounce around in your mind, like, like a pun. You know, there's like two meanings to the word. or It's always two things that kind of contrast. Right, and that's exactly what comedy, that's exactly like my style, that I try to blend in the two, so. Oh shit, we're getting blasted out here, so uh, so hurry up and uh, give us uh, where people can find you online. Uh, on Instagram, Brandon Lawrence Funny, Twitter, Comedian Brandon Lawrence. Alright, cool, can't wait to hear your set. Hey, thanks for listening guys, that's our show, and uh, join us next week and every week for Dive Bar Comedy. Yeah, check us out every week on DiveBarComedy.com and uh, listen to what we have to say and what we got going on and, you know, support our advertisers, support our cause, support GT and Wild Joe, you know, because uh, we're trying to make it in Hollywood, right? Yeah, support live comedy. We're not just supporting us. You're supporting the whole L.A. underground stand-up scene. 
and the dive bar scene. Thanks a lot.